Uh, good morning and welcome to the seventh meeting of the Health and Sport Committee in 2019. We have apologies this morning from Miles Briggs and from Sandra White. Can I ask everyone in the room to please ensure mobile phones are off or on silent uh, and not to use uh, mobile devices for recording or photography. Items one, two and three of our agenda this morning are consideration of an instrument related to the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018, namely the Fishery Products Official Controls Charges EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019. The purpose of these regulations is to make minor uh, technical amendments to the Fishery Products Regulations 2007 to ensure that they continue to function as required after the UK exits the European Union. Uh, agenda item one, colleagues, is to consider the categorisation of the instrument. Uh, under the protocol agreed between the Scottish Government and Parliament on the processes for considering SSIs laid under the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018, this particular SSI has been uh, categorised as low. Uh, this assists committees in prioritisation uh, and also gives the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee a role in highlighting uh, any concerns it may have about uh, categorisation. These instruments must, this instrument must be laid under the affirmative procedure on the basis that certain amendments to the uh, 2009 Scottish regulations relate to a fee in respect of a function exercisable by a public authority in the UK. The T DPLRC considered the instrument at its meeting on the 29th of February, uh, sorry, on the 19th of February 2019. The committee agreed that the instrument had been given the appropriate categorisation. It also determined that it did not need to draw the attention of the Parliament to this instrument on any grounds within its remit. Can I ask uh, any members if they have comments on the categorisation uh, of this instrument? If not, are we all agreed that it is appropriately categorised as low? Agreed. That is agreed. Thank you very much. We therefore move on to agenda item two, which is an evidence session uh, with the Minister and his officials on the instrument, following, following which we will have the formal debate thereon. Uh, may I welcome to the committee Joe Fitzpatrick, Minister for Public Health, Sport and Wellbeing, uh, Neil Mojid, a solicitor from the Legal Director of the Scottish Government, and Steve Hardy from the Regulator Policy Branch, uh, Head of the Regulator Policy Branch at Food Standards Scotland. Welcome to you all, and Minister, can I invite you to make an opening statement? Thank you, Kavina. So pleased to join you this morning to consider the Fishery Products Official Control Charges EU Exit Scotland Amendment uh, Regulations 2019. <clears throat> This instrument is one of a number of um, Scottish statutory instruments being progressed by Food Standards Scotland to ensure our domestic food and feed regulatory regime continues to function effectively after the EU exits the European Union. While it remains the clear position of the Scottish Government that the interests of Scotland would best be served by remaining in the European Union, as a responsible government, we have a duty to make all necessary preparations to ensure Scotland's statute book is ready to help mitigate the damage in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Following the outcome of the referendum in June 2016 and the UK Government's decision to leave the EU, the Scottish Government has been reviewing the operability of all Scottish legislation as part of the necessary contingency planning to identify the legislative amendments needed to ensure our statute book continues to function should the, the UK leave the EU without a deal. Food Standards Scotland has been leading on these elements of the review dealing with our domestic food and feed law, including our domestic food and feed official con controls legislation for which they have policy responsibility. Using powers in the EU Withdrawal Act 2018 to correct deficiencies in retained EU law, the regulations will make minor technical corrections to the fisheries products official control charges Scotland regulations 2007 so they can continue to operate effectively after exit day in a no-deal scenario. The 2007 regulations provide a mechanism for changes to be levied in Scotland on food businesses for the costs incurred by enforcement authorities in carrying out hygiene controls on fish landed at Scottish ports and sold at, at fish markets. These charges are part of the EU official control charging regime for fishery and aquaculture products and are a mandatory requirement of the, of the directly applicable EU framework law in this area. The retained version of the framework of officials controls regulation itself is being corrected under a no-deal scenario by one of the UK statutory instruments being taken forward by the Food Standards Agency. 
The relevant UK instrument was notified to the Scottish Parliament on the 30th of October 2018, and members agreed to the Scottish Ministers giving consent to the UK Government extending the statutory instrument to Scotland in respect of devolved matters. The regulations that members are considering today propose amendments to the 2007 Scottish Enforcement and ex Execution Regulations so they continue to function after we leave the EU and provide the, for appropriate alignment with the retained framework legislation, specifically with regard to the required new definition of a third country and the EU uh, and the euro stroke sterling conversion rate that applies to charge calculations. So I stress that these amendments are, as you said, technical in nature and do not amend any change in policy. They are necessary to ensure legislative continuity for business and enforcement authorities in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Impacts on business and local authorities are expected to be minimal and any which occur will be marginally preferential to industry. Food Standards Scotland carried out a four-week stakeholders consultation in December 2018 on their proposed approach to fixing defi deficiencies in um, Scottish food and feed law and advised that FSS have spoken directly with the individual local authority most affected by the proposed changes uh, contained within these uh, regulations, that's Aberdeenshire, who have expressed no concerns about the required changes. So I hope members agree that as part of Scottish Government's overall programme of legislative contingency planning for Brexit, these regulations provide for the necessary changes to the Fishery Products, products Official Controls Charges Scotland Regulations 2007 to ensure they continue to function effectively, helping to minimise any regulatory disruption to Scottish business and enforcement authorities in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Uh, and, of course, we're happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Minister. And, and clearly you referred at the end of your remarks to uh, having, having regulations in place in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Can I ask simply in relation to uh, a negotiated outcome of the Brexit process, whether these regulations would continue to apply in the same way that they're uh, intended to So do. as with other aspects um, of, of legislation that we've taken through the Parliament, um, we would expect in the event of a, a deal of, of some sort um, being agreed by the Westminster uh, Parliament and the European Union that these, would, these um, items would be repealed, these instruments would be repealed. They would be repealed. That's, 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 that's good to understand. And, and further to uh, the possibility that there is a no-deal Brexit and these regulations stand, uh, you mentioned Aberdeenshire as the area particularly affected. Will ports there or elsewhere require uh, to have uh, uh, border checks or other procedures put in place in order to uh, uh, apply these regulations in that context? I, I don't think these regulations themselves would... Um, require much change to the work that, and probably no change really, to the work that um, it carry, it's carried out in, in, in these areas. Um, the overwhelming majority of fish landed is um, from Scottish or UK um, uh, vessels. There's a small num amount from, from um, other locations, I think. Currently, there's a, some fish landed from the Faroes, which would already be considered um, a third um, country, and a small amount from um, Norway and Iceland, who would be becoming a um, um, third country. But I think we're, we're talking not significant volumes compared to the, 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 the Scottish stroke UK volumes. Thank you very much. Uh, I invite any other questions from members and remind members that the opportunity to ask questions is confined to this part of the proceedings uh, and once we move to the debate there won't be such an opportunity. Emma Harper. Thank you. Um, it, I, I know that in our briefing papers it says that the, these uh, the regulations are minor and technical, that the amendments are being made are just to make sure that we have uh, the ability to transfer legislation if in case of an audio but you mentioned the conversion of uh, pounds to euro and uh, the, the rate that is specified within this is great british pounds one equals euro of 1.1413 so it's all very technical and complicated but i'm assuming that making the exchange rate fixed enables some stability when the market or the pound is falling or or one minute everything is fluctuating how how does this support mitigating against a no deal potential if, if we didn't do this then these charges would be fixed at the 
previous um, euro sterling exchange rate, which would be slightly detrimental to um, the industry, it's a slightly detrimental charge. Um, going forward, I, mean, I, I guess we're all still hoping that we don't get to the point where these regulations, you know, I think my preference is still that we end up um, being subject to, to EU law um, because that is the, the, the gold standard. Um, but if that's not the case, then I, I guess we would need to introduce primary legislation at some future time in order to give a power to um, vary the exchange rate in the future if that was necessary. Um, but this is very much about dealing with the, what happens day one or immediately after a, a no-deal Brexit. OK, thanks. Thank you very much. Are there other questions from members? David Stewart. A good question, Emma Harper raised. Could, could you just clarify, uh, Mr. I understand the reasons for the exchange rate uh, specificity that you've laid down. Um, w so w would this rate last f forever? Is that what you're saying? So th this rate is um, aligned with the rest of the framework. Um, so if, if we weren't to, to, to follow this rate, then there would be an anomaly, which would obviously not be a, um, helpful to business, but we were using different um, uh, exchange rates. Um, but this order simply sets the rate if we want to be able to change it in the future, we will we'll need primary legislation. But that's not something that is of the kind of priority that, that this sure. is. So this is about getting this in place in order that we have yeah. our, 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 our legislation works on day, day one after Brexit. No, I'm, I'm sympathetic, yeah. Minister. I understand why you're doing this. I, I suppose my only issue is rates go up and rates go down. Having, having fixed rates as... As Winston Churchill knows, when you dropped the gold, when you linked it with the gold standard, it's not always a good thing. Um, but do you, if you find then that the rate then was uncompetitive, you would need to go back and have primary legislation, which may take some time. So, so I, th I think, in terms of the primary legislation, you know, I, again, still hoping we don't ever get there. But if we do get there, and this appeared to be a long-term position okay. that we were in, in terms of not being within the European Union, then. Um, I think the primary legislation would be to create a power so that regulations could be used to, to vary any, any rates, um, as you would with, with other charges. But right. this is very much about the, the here and now. And OK, thank you for that. Short term. Thanks very much. Um, there being no other questions, uh, we will move on to agenda item number three, uh, which is the formal debate on the affirmative SSI, in which we have just taken evidence. I remind members uh, that uh, it is now simply a matter of a formal debate. There were no further questions or, or comments from officials. And can I invite the Minister to move motion S5M15927? Formally moved. Thank you very much. Do members wish to make any comments in relation uh, to this item? Uh, if not, Minister, are you content um, with that? We shall then put the question. The question is that the motion S5M15927 be approved. Are we all agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. And I'll pause a moment to let the minister leave. Thank you very much. To agenda item four, subordinate legislation. This is consideration of two negative instruments. The first negative instrument is the materials and articles in contact with Food Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019. The Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee considered the instrument on the 26th of February 2019 and agreed to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament on the general reporting ground and recommended that the Scottish Government correct the error in the drafting at the next legislative opportunity. It is, however, uh, worth noting that this is a minor uh, drafting error. Uh, can I invite m comments from members on this instrument? If there are no comments, can I ask, is the committee agreed to make no recommendations? That is agreed. Thank you very much. The second negative instrument is the Food Standards and Hygiene Miscellaneous Amendment Scotland Regulations 2019. The Delegated Persian Law Reform Committee considered this instrument at its meeting on the 19th of February 2019 and determined that it did not need to draw the attention of the Parliament to this instrument on any grounds within its remit. Can I ask if there are any comments from members on this instrument? If there are not, is the committee agreed to make no recommendations? Agreed. That is agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on then, then to agenda item five, uh, European Union Withdrawal Act 2018, 
This is the consideration of three instruments under that Act. The instruments are as follows. The Food and Feed Safety and Hygiene EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019. The Food Composition, Labelling and Standards EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019. And the, the Nutrition EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019. Protocol, as we have previously discussed, has been agreed between the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament on the process for considering SSIs laid under the European Union Withdrawal Act. This sets out an approach which categorises uh, these instruments uh, to assist committees in scrutiny and to give the delegated Persian Law Reform Committee a specific role in highlighting to a lead committee where, uh, where, it, dis where it has uh, a disagreement with the Scottish Government's categorisation of the SSIs in question. All these three SSIs have been categorised as, as low, and Scottish ministers have also determined to apply the negative procedure uh, to the scrutiny of each of these three SSIs in the Parliament. The Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee considered all three instruments at its meeting on the 26th of February 2019, and agreed that the instruments had been given the appropriate categorisation. Uh, it is simply the matter of categorisation we need to consider today. We will return to matters of substance uh, at a later date. The categorisation of all three instruments is low. Are we all agreed with that, those categorisations? That is agreed. Thank you very much. We will now move into uh, private session. <laughs>